Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be quieting these rear drum brakes. They squeak pretty loud when I press on the brake pedal, and I think that's because they need a new coating of copper anti-seize on the back plate. I've taken this drum off about 10 months ago, and I sprayed it down with some brake cleaner, and that quieted it down for about a week, and then it came back, because I think that back plate needs to be greased up, which is a little bit more, a little bit more involved, but not really that hard of a job. So let me, I'll put this camera down and I'll go press on the brake pedal and I'll show you guys what I mean by the sound that I'm getting from these rear brakes. That's the sound I'm trying to get rid of. So let me put you guys on a time lapse. I can show you kind of some of what I'm doing. I've already break in, broken these loose with my breaker bar. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and I'll get this vehicle jacked up. Then I'll put a jack stand underneath. And then I'll go ahead and use, basically I just use, you know, you could use any kind of tool by loosen them up get them all off a little bit faster just with a regular impact wrench and then once I get the drum off I'll get back with you guys so I've got the car jacked up there's not a great spot on the Toyota Corolla to put a jack stand for the back because I'm already using the jack point there so I usually put one there on that arm and then I keep the jack all the way up so that's not completely resting on that I'm having a hard time getting this drum off. So these are, I believe, put a couple of bolts in there and these little bolt holes that are on the drum already. And then you take, let me see what millimeter I'm using here. This is a 13 millimeter bolt hole here. And you just drill these in and that'll make the drum pop off. So as you can see these 13 millimeter bolts screwed into that hole there. Same thing with this one. And then we can see if we can get this off. And then that popped off fairly easy. Doing that. And that reveals the inside of our drum brake there. So let me start working on this and I'll get back with you guys. So here's the inside of the drum. You can see all the brake dust that came out of it. Again, don't want to breathe that in. Let me see if I can get some brake cleaner. And I'll just spray some in this drum right here. I'll show you guys. Be pretty liberal with this. We'll just get a bucket and we'll just pour at the inside of this into our bucket. You know, leave a mess on the floor, but again, spray cleaner. It'll clean up pretty easily. I'll probably even just sort of leave this on the bucket here. And just kind of spray some more in there. Getting that drum nice and cleaned out. And then I'll position a bucket underneath here and do the same thing. So here's the drum brake. Again, just going to spray all this down into this bucket here. Be very liberal. 
your brake cleaner. Can't use too much. So there's what we're getting in our bucket. The contact points we're going to want to clean are, be, there's three behind each of these drum brakes on the side here. And you can see these, these pads are perfectly fine. And you heard the noise they were making. So if you took this to a brake shop, they may try and sell you new pads for no reason. When all you really need is to do what I'm about to show you. I'm hoping that I can just take off these two retention clips right here possibly the spring at the bottom, and then get behind there with my anti-seize and get each side. But we'll see how we go. I wanna let this dry and then start working on that. Okay, let's see if I can achieve my goals here. So my first plan of attack was to see if I could get this spring off and I Got that one off there, no problem. These are just retention clips. It's kinda important to remember how it, it's put together. So off camera, I'll just uh, sort of put it back together that way. Same thing on this side. You don't push it in all the way, it just spins the, the pin around. And again, make sure you have a, you're doing all the safety stuff. Got my car blocked, got the jack. Not getting under the car. I'm being careful not to put my hands underneath this in case it does fall. Okay. So yeah, try not to touch your brake pads. So at this point I can move them somewhat far. So on this side, let's see if I can show you guys. You can see the three contact points. So we're basically where the three rusty marks are, that's where this pad is rubbing. So my goal is just to be able to reach in there with some anti-seize while at the same time not getting any, any anti-seize on the pads. You don't have to put a ton of anti-seize on there. Just a little bit. And as you see, there's none on there right now. So here's the jar, fresh jar of anti-seize. I'm gonna grab a paper towel so that I can Not put a ton on there, as I'm saying, I just want to put a little bit on each side. And hopefully I can just pop these clips back on there. And I'll have much quieter breaks. Of course, I'll have to do this on the other side. Let's see. Again, trying to get a little bit. I'll dab some, and then I'll actually put like a paper towel over this brake pad. And hopefully that'll keep it from getting any anti-seize on there. Very carefully. I'm going to put the copper anti-seize on this rubbing point here. 
or I got part of the tighter one done. Then I'm gonna put it on this other point here. Dip it in the jar. None on the brake pad yet. So, so far, mission is going as planned. Let's see if I can get a little bit of view for you guys. You guys see how much I put on the first two spots there. Bottom one might be a little tricky because I left that one spring on there. So let's see. Okay. So yeah, I see the point there. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna get our paper towel. Kind of see, see what we can do keep the pad covered. Kind of come from above there and just get a healthy amount of anti-seize on this one point here. Be done with it. That's just a piece of metal there, not any anti C. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm just gonna kind of press this back and then we're gonna repeat on the other side here. Move my few things out of the way. So you got this other nice looking drum brake over here, or drum pad, brake pad. Let's see, this one may be a little harder. Because it doesn't want to move as far away. That may be because I need to take the spring out on the bottom. So we have to do that. Not the end of the world. Yeah, this one has the parking brake on it. I think that's why it doesn't want to come out as much. But I'm definitely not going to go through the hassle getting the parking brake out. Let me get you guys a better view. Let's see if I can get this bottom spring here. Pressed in. Which I don't know if I can do that with these pliers. Let me try a different pair. No, nope, not working yet. Let's see, that's pretty hard to get out. Let me reevaluate this and get back with you guys. Alright, so I decided that what I can do, instead of taking that spring off, so I can just get a screwdriver or some kind of pry bar, and I can just pry this, and that gives me plenty of space to get in there and get these three points lubricated with some anti-seize, 
Again, don't need to do too much. I just want these brakes to be quiet. This top one is a lot safer because you actually really don't get too close to the pad at all. So you've got a healthy amount there. This middle one's kind of where you gotta be real gentle. I also consider just using a, uh, like a Q-tip. I felt that would be, that could be a little more surgical and avoiding the pad. Use a little bit more there. And again, lean toward getting it on the back, extra more on the back plate than you want than getting any on this brake pad. Still would like to get a little bit more on there. There we go. The nice thing about using copper anti-seize, well, not the nice thing, but the reason you should use copper anti-seize or you know, lead-based based, anti-seize is the uh, copper is malleable. It can deal with the repeat compressions associated with the brakes, basically how the brakes work, pressing in back on that back plate over and over again. So again, for this one, we have to kind of come in from the top and then come out the top as well. And there you go. I was able to get that point lubricated as well. So now I'll just go through with a paper towel. Kind of clean up as much of this anti seize as possible. All the little bit of extra bits. Press these brakes kind of back on. Let's see if we can get. Oops, back on. Without too much trouble. We're going to go to the back here, find the hole. Let's see. Okay. And here's where Kind of having the reference one i can see that this was actually flipped the other way this little bottom backing plate here that's why it's not sitting flush so we'll flip that back over put that on now we'll probably need some plier help so that we can get enough compression on this spring here. And there you go, fairly easy. Make sure it sits in the grooves and it's set and looks appropriately set in there. So you don't want this flies off here. The brakes won't work very well. We can find our other one up here. Appropriate back plate on there. And then we'll go ahead and get a spring on there. And then we'll use the pliers again to get 
stick this back on there. See if we can get it smooth. Yeah, there's a little more tension on this one. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get it as smooth. Maybe because I did the other one first. Can't close. I think I'm just using the wrong pliers for the job. I'm gonna use the longer needle nose pliers. Wait, I should probably turn it the appropriate way too. Came close there, but again, just a little too much tension. Give it a few more goes and we'll get this in there, I think. There it goes. It helps just to have the pin lined up before you go anyway. So there we go. We got this all lubricated back up. I'm going to go ahead and just put this all back together, which basically just involves putting the, the drum back on and the wheel back on. I'm going to do the other side, same step, and then we'll test it, see if they're quiet now or if they're still squeaking. If they're still squeaking, we'll cry a little bit and see if we can figure out something else. Also, now's a good time to remind you guys it's not a bad idea to put a little copper anti-seize on this before you put the drum back on. And then now is also a pretty good time, if you haven't done it in a while, to go ahead and bleed your brake since you already have the wheel off. So I'll put that drum back on. If you want to see that brake bleed video, go ahead and subscribe. So let me get that back on and I'll get back with you guys. I have the drum back on here. And then just make sure it spins freely. freely. It's okay if it catches a little bit. You just want it to be able to spin. You don't want you want it to be consistent. You don't want it to be like catching and then stopping, but I'm pretty happy with that amount of resistance there. All right, so I did the other side. Moment of truth here. Let's see how the brakes sound. Yeah, already. If I press really hard, I might get a little bit of a squeak. Much quieter than it was before. Much happier with that. That was totally worth it. I think that little bit of squeak might even go away as it moves around in there. Everything gets lubricated. But thanks for watching, guys. If you got any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments below. I'm also going to be putting out a brake bleed video, which is what I did while I was doing this as well. If you want to check that out, go ahead and subscribe. I'll catch y'all next time.